Last subject to talk about, which is kind of funny, is this topic about Brooklyn skate shops. Sorry, Brooklyn projects, um, the skate shop out there in California that unfortunately has suffered at the hands of um, Hurricane Hillary, I think it is, right? That's ravaging across the sort of... Um, across the west coast so force of fears go out to people who've been negatively affected by it it definitely does look gnarly we've seen what's happening over there in maui and hawaii and force of feelings go out to people over there we can see how bad these things get i don't think it's as bad in parts of you know california la wherever it may be but i still think it's bad enough to kind of acknowledge it and say hey hopefully you guys are all right now one particular skate shop brooklyn projects has always had these issues over the years with flooding um somehow their shop just hasn't got the necessary things in place that will prevent it from not suffering at the hands of flash flooding whether it's having the stock you know elevated whether it's having some pro you know something in place in the store that can alleviate the amount of water that comes in throughout the years i felt like i've always seen these clips whenever there's a flash flood whenever there's some sort of hurricane brooklyn projects always kind of suffers and their stock you know kind of gets destroyed off the back of it now that it's kept happening and it's becoming a kind of a constant, it kind of makes me think, is this negligence or is this just intended in terms of purposely getting your stock damaged so that you can sell it out the back door? Because we know, especially when it comes to limited edition shoes like Nike SBs, and in this particular topic, the issue is concerning the Nike SB um, Yoto Horigomi shoes, which are a SB that they did. I think the guy is a fucking Olympic gold medalist for skateboarding. I think it might have been the first one when skateboarding first got introduced at the Olympics. It's kind of an iconic thing. The colorway is a bit meh. I'm not really that into them. And I fucking hate dunks anyway. Oh, as a sidebar, are we all are we all kind of like pretending to like dunks lows or something? Because I feel like they're not the greatest shoe to wear with regular jeans or just with shoes or with shorts, whatever it may be. They just look a bit shit. I always preferred Air Force Ones over dunks anyway. And if I'm gonna wear dunks, I'm gonna wear highs. That's why one of the most legendary dunk colorways in the Tiffany dunk from back in the day or the Diamond Co. Supply dunk, I always was fucking annoyed when they first put them out that they weren't made in a high because I thought that colorway deserved to be put in a high. But regardless, this dunk love is a bit weird. So everyone's on dunks now. Everyone's fucking jacking these and they want them. Same way they want the fucking April skateboards and dunks that are meant to be coming out very, very soon. And obviously the release date is coming up. And just by coincidence, all of the stock that Brooklyn Projects had that they were going to sell has now been damaged by the water. And... Um, because it's been damaged, um, the owner of Brooklyn Projects, Dom DeLuca, decided to go on social media and basically get really grumpy with all the customers and fans that essentially have probably flooded his store, no pun intended, with phone calls ever since this video has been posted online. My issue with him getting angry at people contacting him trying to buy the shoes that are allegedly um, water damaged that he's going to throw away quote unquote, um, is that if you didn't want people to kind of rail your line and kind of, you know, make you annoyed why even upload the video why share this on social media it makes absolutely no sense but anyway let me play the video of dom deluca complaining about all these kids reaching out to him trying to buy the pairs of wet shoes that had been damaged courtesy of the hurricane that ravaged his store once again i just want to say um basically a big fuck you to all these fucking idiots that are hitting us up to buy fucking shoes. You know what, you wanna support the shop? Come to the shop and buy some fucking gear or product. Don't come asking me or anybody else about fucking wet ass shoes. We're not selling them, we're throwing them the fuck out. And that's that. So, y'all are fucking real goofy. And it just shows me what the world is really like because in a moment of like, fucked upness you guys are all thinking about yourself over shoes that's why resellers are the fucking dirge of the earth the funny thing he says that right is that in one way resellers are the dirge of the earth or are the scums of the earth in some ways i understand what he means but in another side of things without resellers would his skate shop still exist without a nike sb account would his skate shop still exist and a lot of these core skate shops have always annoyed me with this current rhetoric they have because I remember when I was coming up in the scene and I was working for Hypebeast when I was really young, 
I was one of the first employees at Hypebeast. So I used to blog for them back in the day. I used to do the blog when they used to be on Blogspot. I had my little business cards that I'd hand out to people. Being a contributing editor, I'd get paid like $50 uh, per article via PayPal. Big up Kevin Ma. If you're still there holding down the for General Ma over there at fucking Hypebeast doing the damn thing. And I remember going to certain skate shops like Slam City Skates and a few other core skate shops around London and basically trying to talk to them about their skate, about their skate shop, maybe sort of an interview, maybe do a little street style picture thing, whatever it may be. And they would look at me like the scum on the bottom of their shoe. They'd fucking vibe me out of the store. They'd just be cunts about it. I think it, if I'm not mistaken, um, Slam City Skates had a thing in place where if you wanted to buy a pair of SBs, you had to do a kickflip or something right in order to buy a pair of limited edition shoes or if you no, sorry or if you could do a kickflip in the shoes that you were buying they would give you a discount on them or something or maybe you get them for free whatever somewhere along the lines but everything they did made you know that they despise the sneakerhead customer they despise that nike skateboarding which was a specifically you know the, the division of nike that was focused on skateboarding was mainly um, a, a, a division that kind of attracted sneakers because of the limited edition shoes they made. Obviously, they had, you know, some core colorways that they did season in, season out. But for the most part, people only cared about SBs when they were limited edition. So the kids and the sneakerheads would go there, queue up, buy the shoes and resell them. So no one was actually wearing them day to day. But I guess if you're a skate shop that generally doesn't get a lot of foot traffic, and then you get all these kids coming in only to buy the SBs, it can really make you feel, un, you know fucking worthless and feel like shit when they all leave with just the sb shoes and they're not buying element t-shirts zoo york shit dc shit whatever else stuff krell trap chocolate stuff that's on the fucking racks picking up dust i fucking get it but your issue isn't with us isn't with the sneakerheads isn't with the quote-unquote hype beast which i've never been one isn't with the streetwear heads it's with in general the kind of you know the system that exists around skateboarding shops and how they you know how they don't make a lot of money and how you know a lot of them sit on inventory and they don't really innovate and the kids themselves and are buying a lot of stuff online or in big malls or in whatever department stores whatever it may be that's amazingly where your issue is so your ire is you'll usually that's the wrong person and even if you are a super core person and you hate that particular type of clientele coming into your store why not take away your fucking nike sb account why not go to nike sb and say hey i don't want to sell limited edition nike sbs anymore just give me the core stuff or just take away my account totally i don't want nike sb anymore you could do that but they don't so instead dom de luca like other skateboard shop owners out there that have an sb accounts that hate fucking sneakerheads and that hate streetwear kids in general they have this fucking bitterness that they have against people that like that sort of stuff and then they decide that his big age like this dom deluca guy might be early 50s early 60s decides to give the kids a middle finger to feel like a badass because these kids are ringing up his store wanting to buy stock that he currently owns wanting to put money in his till he's upset about it because he decided to put the video out there i don't know what to get sympathy to get clout whatever he decided to put the video out there on his social media platform and some entrepreneurial kids saw his opportunity to maybe buy some of these dunks that are maybe water damaged maybe air dry them out for a week and then resell them for you know double the money that they need and then use that money to buy some weed or whatever else that they usually buy who gives a fucking fuck but him discouraging entrepreneurial spirit because it gets on his nerves is hilarious him putting his middle finger up at kids who want to buy shoes and put money in his pocket is fucking hilarious when if he doesn't like the customers all he needs to do is cancel his own nike sb account will he do that obviously not but i also have my doubts on if he's gonna throw away the shoes because this up and coming picture we have here from somebody maybe associated with brooklyn projects we have a whole entire floor full of these fucking horigomi fucking dunk esbs and they're all splayed across the floor and look what's at the bottom there there's a massive air conditioner of sorts blowing cold air all over these dunks that have been water damaged so maybe they're not that much damaged. They just need to get dried out and then they can be resold again. But all that hullabalab that he was talking about throwing them out isn't true because most likely Dom DeLuca is going to do what Dom DeLuca does, what he's known for being backdoor Dom DeLuca. And these are going to be sold to one or two people, backdoor, friends and family, hush, hush, wink, wink style. Because why else would you be drying them out if you're going to throw them out? Why would you get water damaged stuff, dry it out and then throw it out? He's going to throw it out in his current condition. So all of this fucking posturing, all this crying online, all of this complaining for what? 
for absolutely nothing. In the end, he's gonna chuck away the shoes and he's gonna do exactly so he's gonna backdoor the shoes to somebody and he's gonna give them to reseller one way or the other. He might not think of them as a reseller. He might think of them as an independent business owner. He might think of them as a fucking um, independent contractor or whatever he thinks of them. But they're still the same level of reseller. But then when you look at this other tweet here, courtesy of Sock Jig and also an account called Brandon, he has documented other occasions of, across the years when Dom DeLuca and Brooklyn Projects have had issues with flooding. And to me... I don't personally believe in fucking coincidences. And you have here January 12th, May 4th and August 20th, three separate occasions where Brooklyn Projects has somehow suffered from fucking flooding and hasn't made any improvements into how they manage their stock, how they stock their inventory, however you fucking call that shit in terms of having stuff in the fucking stock room. They've made no adjustments over the years. Stuff gets kept stuff keeps getting damaged. They keep having to throw away stuff or burn shit and I don't believe it. It's probably a scam. It's probably something that they do and work to their advantage or it's definitely a massive oversight from a business owner who's complaining about sneakheads and hypebeats coming to their store. But it makes a lot of sense because he can't run his business a sensible way and he can't make necessary improvements when his store currently keeps getting flooded. It's absolutely ridiculous. So all these occasions, he keeps getting flooded. He's made no effort to change it. As you can see here from these accounts, courtesy of fucking Brandon. And in my opinion, something is definitely all right. So don't be surprised if you see all of these damaged box um you know horigami um dunk sb showing up at your nearest fucking sneaker reseller platform very very soon i really really do think it's gonna happen so um let's see this other fucking quote here from the brandon post it says um, a person asks him and says hey bro bro needs to invest in some inventory shelves brandon replies and says i bet his inventory shelves burned down in multiple fires back in 2020 uh brooklyn project's been getting attacked by the neighborhood for a minute i guess so they get attacked by fire and by water this feels like one of those fucking avatar scripts right it's fucking crazy if this is real so this is a fucking um uh i think a screenshot from one of their posts back in the day that says here's the pos in the act a piece of shit i'm assuming we saw him earlier didn't give him a hard time about making a fucking mess we know what a large percentage of people in the streets are decent people that fell on hard times this is not one of them this dude is a piece of shit and a drug addict derelict in the video you'll see him taking a bigger piece of cardboard to add to the small fire that he started unfucking believable okay so somebody purposely decided to burn their shit again arson okay cool somebody decides to pick on one store to fucking burn i'm not really too sure if that's believable i'm not really too sure if that's an inside job allegedly who really knows but i do want to go back to the fucking persona of these skate shop owners of this fucking retail streetwear store owner type of persona this kind of quasi retail mafia type of guy because i feel like i'm a strong individual i have my own convictions and i'm not going to be put off from something because one person gives me a bad experience but i can say from my unfortunate bad experience dealing with one of the founders of palace that i've never worn palace since the day it first started because i was one of the first people to buy one of the first sh shirts they used to put in you know they put on fucking retail stores i think i bought one of the first inside out palace trifeg fucking triangle t-shirts back in the day but i met one of the founders he was a fucking cunt to me or we had a bad interaction maybe i was a cunt maybe he was a cunt regardless i didn't like it and i've never worn that shit since then right and every time i mention the brand i'm saying it's fucking shit i'm never gonna not say shit because i fucking hate it cool so i also think there was a time in my life when i was growing up and i was into skateboarding and i'd go to skate shops and I was young and I was into sneakers more so than into skateboarding. And I looked the way I did and I was, you know, maybe one of the first kind of guys from ends. I would go in these stores that wasn't some black kid from fucking Labrook Grove that would go in there. And I always felt like they would vibe me out and they kind of didn't give me, I don't know, didn't just treat me nice when I went in there. And it usually would leave a lasting impression where it kind of made me question whether I wanted to skate anyway. And it really just let, made, let, you know, left a bad taste in my mouth. Over the years, reading forums, reading magazines, listening to interviews and shit, watching fucking skateboarding podcasts and shit, I realized that that's a standard thing that most skate shop owners do to vibe out customers to kind of, you know, weed out the fucking posers and the people who are not really about that life to sort of keep skateboarding pure and keep it core. You can't really now, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. They fucking sell skateboards in fucking Argos. It's not core anymore. Palace is collaborating with fucking McDonald's. It's fucking gone. 
But I understand them trying to do so because they have maintained, it has maintained more of its integrity than fucking rollerblading or than fucking BMXing and something. So maybe all of that work, all of that bad vibes, all of that attitude, all of these older dudes thinking they're 21 and shit, it's kind of added to the allure. But fundamentally, there is a really losery, pathetic vibe about a guy that looks the way that Dom DeLuca looks, who is his age, putting a middle finger up at little kids. There's nothing more cringe about life in general than being this guy. I nothing. just want to say, um, basically, a big fuck you. Like, there's nothing more cringe to a being this guy, being the fucking middle-aged retail owner of a store with mainly young people feeling like you're a badass because you just happen to live a long time you were born many many years ago so you were around when shit basically started but it doesn't make you special it doesn't make you cool or anything or anything along those kind of lines and then you have this fucking attitude in your older age is nothing more cringy about it and i'm so happy so thankful that i'm not that guy i'm so thankful i can enjoy the things i enjoy the way that i enjoy them i just kind of keep it moving i let the kids have their space i understand what the game is i kind of keep my you know i mind my business i keep it moving i don't have this bitter entitled angry grumpy persona because in effectively if dom deluca isn't 50 isn't 60 and he's actually 45 that's what it does to you it makes you look fucking old it makes you look weathered it makes you look tired and you end up looking like a fucking fool and eventually you will end up selling it to resellers somewhere along the line so that's why i saw i thought that was funny and i'm wondering what's gonna happen i wonder if all this hype and all this fucking mold gate all this fucking you know stuff happening with the fucking shoes being damaged by water i wonder if it's going to somehow positively impact the value of the shoes i wonder if everyone's going to be jumping on these because of the drama around them and all the history surrounding these shoes in general because the colorway for me isn't nothing to shout home about i generally don't give a fuck about dunks like that anyway but i wonder if all of this sort of like backstory is actually going to add to the allure of these shoes if we're going to see them go for crazy amounts of stock x on ebay and shit i wonder I bloody wonder.